Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel and for another YouTube video. So today I'm going to be doing something slightly different. We're going to be cooking a keto pizza. If you haven't figured it out before now, I am keto. I'm low carb. I don't have any added sugar or anything like that. Uh, I have been keto for the best part of two and a half years. I have, you know, off days. I have a cheat day now and again, but the majority of the time I am low carb or no carb as much as possible. So what I'm going to be doing today is sharing with you how I make a keto pizza, which is using the fathead dough recipe. It has taken some trial and error to get to the point that I am now. I have found a very good recipe, which I actually have because I find the full recipe is too much for me, but I have found the perfect recipe for me and I do like my pizzas to have, you know, the meats and the hams and salamis and all that kind of thing on it as well. So that's what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to show you how I make the base, how I prepare the base, then putting all the ingredients on and what the pizza looks like afterwards. I will also share the ingredients below just in case you're interested in trying it out. This is actually the best recipe that I found on the internet uh, and I've used it quite a few times as well. I've shared it with other people and I've had the same feedback that it's one of the best recipes that they have found um, that works. So. Yeah, let's give it a go. I'm going to show you first of all how I make the base. Okay, so let's start. I've got my saucepan and wooden spoon, my measuring cup, which is half a cup, and my cheeses. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take my mozzarella and I'm just going to measure out a cup of mozzarella cheese. The recipe does ask for two, but again, I'm halving the ingredients. So I'm going to go ahead and just measure out one cup. So I'm just gonna top up with a fresh bag to the one cup mark and there thereabouts that'll do that's fine okay so the next thing i want to do is take my cream cheese again I'm using the same brand i have a thing with emborg i've tried a few different ones but this is my favorite so i'm going to take my tablespoon and the recipe says three tablespoons i'm using or eyeballing one and a half and i usually lick the spoon i love cream cheese my favorite so adding a bit of seasoning, a bit of salt, a bit of pepper. I love pepper, so just add a bit more. Uh, minced garlic, just to give the base a little bit of flavor as well. Not too much. I don't want to overpower uh, the toppings, so just enough to give it a bit of a kick. So low heat, and I'm just going to let that sit and melt. In between times, I'm just going to prep my egg. The recipe does ask for one whole egg, and again, halving it, so best thing to do is to crack a whole egg, uh, whisk it up, and then measure out half of the uh, mixture, which I will do shortly. So I'm just stirring the mozzarella and the cream cheese together to make sure that the heat is evenly distributed. I don't want to burn the cheese. So I'm just going to whisk the egg and get that ready, which, yep, there we go. Pop that to one side. So I do like to keep a tidy kitchen and I do tidy as I go. Just going to get my flour out. So I have my coconut and almond flour ready and some Italian herbs, which I add to the base just to give it a little bit of flavor. So it's not got a very strong cheese flavor. So my mixture consistency is getting there. It probably just needs another couple of seconds just to warm up. There's a few mozzarella bits that haven't quite melted, so I'll let it sit. While the pan is hot, so I'm going to go in with my almond flour and my coconut flour next. So just getting that prepared. Oh, I love the smell of coconut flour. Mix the egg into the mixture. So again, using half of the egg as much as possible. Again, just eyeball it so it looks about right. Whiz it round in the saucepan. You won't get the egg completely mixed into the cheese, um, but just get it as close as possible so that you don't get big lumps of egg once you're ready to add the flour. So the recipe calls for a uh, half a cup of almond flour. So again, halving the, mix, uh, halving the measurement to a quarter of a cup. So again, eyeball it as much as possible. And with my coconut flour, it does say two tablespoons. So I'm just gonna go in with one heaped tablespoon. I'm gonna add some Italian herbs just to give it a nice little bit of flavor and obviously mix all of that together. I have made a little bit of a mess, um, which I don't usually do, but yeah, there you go. So just mixing everything together and getting it into a dough state.
So the next thing I'm going to do is just prepare my greaseproof paper, parchment paper. I use the Glad Cook and Bake. I have done for a while and I've got my rolling pin there as well. So the dough, I'm just going to transfer onto one of the sheets for the parchment paper. Um, and what I do is I just kind of make it into a little bit of a, a ball shape and then apply the second parchment paper over the top and spread it out with my hands first. Going in with the rolling pin, just I tend to kind of roll it into a circular shape. I use my pizza board as a guide, um, but just be careful that you don't roll too thin. I have done that a few times. Um, you can go and correct it, which is a great thing about this dough. But yeah, just, just kind of make it into a, a reasonable pizza size shape. The next thing I'm going to do is just poke some holes in uh, the dough with a fork just to avoid any bubbling. This just helps the base cook faster and more evenly. So I've popped the pizza in the oven for a few minutes just to get it brown on the top. And now I'm going to start constructing the base as in the sauce, which is a favorite pasta sauce of mine. I just like the flavor of it. I've used it for a while, but you can use whichever one you like. Um, but we're going to start constructing the toppings. So pasta sauce on the top first. Then I'm just going to go in and sprinkle some more mozzarella um, just on the top to give it that nice kind of cheesy pizzery kind of vibe i suppose um this cheese does tend to clump a little bit so just make sure that whatever you're using that you evenly distribute i'm just doing a box standard ham and cheese pizza so i'm just got some chopped honey baked ham that i'm throwing on the top but you can use whatever keto approved toppings that you like for your pizza i'm just going to go in then with some parmesan cheese just to give it that little bit of bite um parmesan's got quite a strong flavor to it in my eyes uh, and I'm just going to add some oregano on the top as well. I love oregano or oregano, whatever you want to call it, um, just to soak up any oils from the cheeses. And I'm just going to throw this back in the oven very quickly. So the pizza is now in the oven. It's probably going to take about seven to ten minutes. I'll check on it in a little bit, but I'm going to have a cheeky glass of wine while I wait. Um, what I would say is with this particular recipe, I have I have half the ingredients because I find the full... Um, ingredients tend to be a bit much for me i find the pizza to be a bit too big uh i do tend to roll my base out a little bit thinner than probably you would or some people would i like mine to be a little bit more crispy than gunky in the middle so just be mindful to roll it out to the thickness because what you'll find is that the dough doesn't expand if anything it tends to flatten a little bit um but again this recipe tried and tested I've tried a few different ones. This is the best one that I've found. Um, so yeah, I'll show you what the pizza looks like. But today I've just gone for a very basic ham and cheese. I had some ham, honey baked ham in the fridge that I needed to use up. So a great day to be doing it, to be honest, is to make the most out of the ingredients that I've got in the fridge. Uh, but yeah, that's basically where we are. Um, I will give this a little bit of time to cook in the oven uh, while I have a little glass of wine and then we'll see what it comes out like. So the pizza is now out of the oven. I just popped it onto my pizza board. And as you can see, it's just cooked to perfection. Um, I do like mine a little bit crispy, but the toppings are all nice and golden brown and ready to be sliced and eaten. And that's it. A simple recipe for fathead dough where the toppings don't drop off the pizza. I cannot wait to eat this. Fantastic.